We sat around one day and realized there were five newspapers. There was the Berkeley Bob, there was the LA Free Press, there was the, um, in Lansing, Michigan, there was the paper. In, uh, in Austin, Texas, there was um, Jeff Shiro's uh, rag, and uh, there was our own paper, these village other. And we thought, well, we've got a syndicate here. You know, what are we gonna call it? And we kicked that around for a while, and I'd always been impressed by the French Maquis, the underground. And so I, I think I came up with the underground. So we called it the Underground Press Syndicate. And the next thing was what we were gonna do. And basically after a few months, Evo just realized they couldn't cope with it and, and handed it over to me and said, you, will you run it? And almost simultaneously, I get this call from Phoenix, from Tom, saying that he has all the underground papers that have been following him since the beginning, and could he help? And I said, sure, Tom, let's be partners. Let's open a bank account. We both have to sign the checks. I've already agreed that our income would be, we'll sell UPS subs to Time magazine, and people that want to read all the papers, the deal will be that part, partly for joining UPS, you agree to send the papers to everybody else on the list, including people who paid for subscriptions. So the first commit, so, and I said I would write a newsletter every month, and he would uh, print it and send it out. And uh, the first communication I got from him was Phoenix with the bullet holes through it. And then not, Orpheus. sorry, Orpheus, Orpheus, yes. So not long afterwards, he, um, he came to New York and set up that place on, I believe, West 10th Street, right by the sidewalk. There was always a prominent uh, canister of uh, what's it outside. What is that stuff? I've forgotten now. You know, sniffing. Nitrous. Yeah, yeah, nitrous. Always had a can of, can of nitrous outside. And, um, and his tribe and everything. And he, he basically took over UPS. Uh, I was only happy, really happy to have him do that, of course. Uh, and he financed it by going to Bell and Howell and selling the microfilm rights. And, um, there were, and then for a while, oh, and then I was in Japan when he brought out the first issue of High Time, so I sent him a column from Japan, which I think is in the first issue. Nothing to do with marijuana at all, just a column on Japan. And then when I came back, he put me in the office, and I was, you know, not really doing too much there. I, don't, I can't remember if I wrote or not. I introduced him to Craig Kapitas, uh, and then one day he sent us all down for that um, uh, conference in uh, Washington, you know, a normals conference. Hired a plane to send us down to Washington. Um, and then once Tom and I were out at um, one of the underground press syndicate things, somewhere in the Midwest, I can't remember where, and he had that huge car with the big thing on the top. And uh, we were driving around and we got stopped by a cop. And the cop, uh, for no reason except the thing was weird, the cop stopped us. And the cop asked Tom for his license and Tom said he didn't have it with him. And the cop said, oh, well, how about some identification? And then Tom denied having anything. And this went on for a while. And Tom absolutely refused to cooper cooperate with this cop in any way whatsoever. And the cop finally, in desperation, just let us go. And I was really impressed. I've never seen anybody face down a cop before and get away with it, you know.